are here with Lee Murray, who is, um, well, this gets into the time travel bit, has recently released the grotesque monster stories, but at the time of release of this interview shall be doing something else entirely. So we're just going to say author of fun things. <laughs> well, I'm also in the future anyway, because I'm, you know, several hours ahead of you. I'm now on Saturday morning and you're still on Friday evening. Oh, and yeah. so, yes, we're, we're very progressive here in New Zealand. We like to be ahead of the game. So, yes, yeah, so we will be time traveling in two, in two senses. I like that. That's fun. Okay, so tell us a little bit about yourself and um, all of these interesting things that you're doing. Um, well, I'm an award-winning writer and editor from New Zealand. I write speculative fiction and horror. Uh, and I have um, a number of series out, um, Tane McKenna Adventure Series, which is sort of a speculative oh. mili military thriller series set in New Zealand. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, that's actually done very well for me. It's won um, two Sir Julius Vogel Awards um, for wow. science fiction, fantasy and horror. And it also was um, a Bram Stoker nominee last year. So oh, congrats. Uh, very it's exciting. Novel. Thank you. So that's been, yeah, a really great fun, fun um, series to write. And, and I think I kind of hit a niche that hadn't been filled before you know there wasn't much in the way of of, of thrillers set in New Zealand using mm -hmm. New Zealand landscape and flora and fauna so um, I think people were sort of keen to see something a little different in that genre and so yeah I was very very lucky yeah. um, and there's a in this in grotesque which you mentioned which is just released but when this when this interview goes out, it will be well and truly down the track. But um, this particular, there's a, there's a, a the latest little Tane McKenna novella, which follows on from that series, it appears in this book. And ah. it's probably, it's the only place it'll be appearing for the moment. So mm -hmm. um, if people want to follow on from the series and see what happens next, then they'll, this is the book to get. So good to know. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a, and I've got a, a collaborative series that I write with Dan Raybart. So that's the oh. series here. Oh, um, beautiful, yeah, beautiful Daniel Sierra covers. He's an Italian artist, just yeah. absolutely gorgeous. He wow. does Stephen King's covers, so oh, so it's really nice to be to have him on these covers. And actually, he um he's um done the third cover too for the for the latest book in the series, mm -hmm. which comes out, which has just come out two weeks ago. If we are in November, <laughs> so yeah. um yes, his uh so that's called Blood of the Sun, and it's a collaborative supernatural crime noir series um, oh crime noir super fun yeah super fun and um we, we've been able to again draw on the new zealand landscape and some mm -hmm. of our mythology and also our our heritage cuz i'm a third generation chinese new zealander mm -hmm. and my my collaborator dan raybarts is ngati poro which is a which is a, a maori tribe so he's able to draw on his background and and family connections and um and and you know um to, to old Maori which is the Maori worldview mm -hmm. and I'm able to come from my own sort of Chinese um, New Zealand background so it's really fun it's set yeah, in the wow. near future so yeah it's a little I think we've been able to sort of fill a niche again that hasn't been filled before especially mm -hmm. with cross genre. Mm -hmm. um, writing and I'm sure you find that with lots of your interview guests you know when they when they they find a sort of cross genre niche that's not really been exploited before or not, yes. maybe not the word exploited but explored before um, it's great because you get something really original but on the other hand it's hard to place it on the bookshelves and yeah and and readers don't really know oh well what is this exactly and and you know <laughs> what are these people doing and um but once they once they get a hold of the series and get into it then mm -hmm. yeah oh we love this is so different so that's always fun that's always yeah. fun yeah yeah no, I love cross genre series so much because I read, you know, all of the different genres, but I always find that okay, where do I actually put this in my categorization? I just it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean it's a little bit like the contract with the reader, isn't it? When you read a romance, you you kind of expect that the hero and the heroine will get together at the end, and there'll be a happy ending, or at least there'll be some kind of resolution for their couple. I mean, and when you read a mystery, you want to find out who done it, right? You right. need to know who the murderer is and how they how they got away with it. 
um, at, for so long, maybe not got away with it. Um, but when you when you write in these cross genre um, um, sort of style books, then it's sometimes hard to know what the contract is with the reader and the reader's going, well, well, what am I expecting from this? And so it's hard to, so that whole, you know, the satisfaction at the end depends mm -hmm. on what they were expecting when they, when they started reading the book. So it can be a tricky, tricky area to yeah. get right. Yeah. But if you can do it, then by all means, absolutely go for it. Well, it's the challenge, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, so now you actually have to tell us about each series, what's going on. Enough without spoilers. We don't want to spoil anything for the readers. Okay, well, the Tain McKenna series, I'll tell you about the first one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's probably my one of my most successful books, wow. Into the Mist. Wow. Um, it, yeah, this is a Dean Samed cover. He's a, again Beautiful. an award-winning uh, cover artist from um, the UK. And um, this story is set in the Te Urawera Ranges, which is a which is a national park in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, beautifully forested area. Uh, the people who come from there are called the Tuhoi tribe, and that they're Ooh. called the Children of the Mist because the the landscape is full of mist and mystery, and it's just absolutely gorgeous. There's some yeah. absolutely amazing national walk park walks there. Um, and the story is about a, a, a um, there's a lot of people gone missing. And so a scientific team goes into the, into the forest and a military team goes in with them because they're, the military is aware of the people that have been going missing here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and I've postulated that, uh, the New Zealand Tuatara, which you can see the eye of on the cover of this book. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's how it's kind of – the New Zealand Tuatara is is unique species and uh -huh. um, doesn't exist in any other place apart from New Zealand, and it is on its own in the, you know, sort of the biological classification. So if you think of, if you think of a, a fork, you know um, – um, you have uh, snakes and lizards, mm -hmm. snakes and lizards, and then you ha um, and then you have Tuatara all on its own out the end there. And of course, I have postulated a monster which might have existed or might not have existed. Um, but there is some quite good scientific evidence for these bigger creatures. So um, in New Zealand, existing in New Zealand. So I had such a lot of fun um, yeah. doing that, and also tying in some of the local legend and lore. Mm -hmm. Around around um, Tuatara and and lizards and that kind of thing. So wonderful. Yeah. Ooh, I love being able yeah. to see the different lores that get built up and oh, that'll be yeah. Fun. Yes, and New Zealand's very good for that because not mm -hmm. only we have the landscape, we have some wonderful stories that are part mm -hmm. of our culture here. So um, I've been very lucky to to have been born here and lived here all my you know most of my life. And um, so yes, it's it's really nice to be able to draw on those local stories. Fun. Fun. Okay. All right. What about this grotesque monster series or stories? It's a bunch of short, short stories, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, that's right. Um, yeah, grotesque monster stories is basically a collection of my some of my short stories, several award-winning stories and some new fresh stories that I haven't put out before. So, uh -huh. um very excited about that. In fact, um, when Steve Dillon of Things in the Well approached me to put out a collection, I kind of said, "Oh, you know, I'm still a baby writer. I, I, I haven't got enough. I haven't got enough. <laughs> to, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not ready yet. But actually, when I looked back through, you know, I had about 50 short stories out there, and I thought oh, wow. published short stories out there, and I thought, you know, what I probably do. And I was talking to Karen Warren, who's a very accomplished. Um, um, writer um, of horror fiction in, mm -hmm. from Australia and she said mm -hmm. well you know what's the general theme and I looked through and I thought oh I do seem to have a lot of monster stories <laughs> and so I picked a few of my favorites and wrote a few more and this became this particular this particular um, book and Greg Chapman from Australia did the beautiful cover mm -hmm. art really it's, um, really it's really unique isn't it yeah. it's lovely really stunning and and um, he's based it on the Da Vinci's Da Vinci's grotesque features. Uh, oh, uh, that's why it looks familiar. I was going to say yes. it looks sort of, uh, you know, artistic in the, the older styles, but I couldn't think of why it was that way. 
Well, it's so unfair to say to a cover artist, actually, we want something that's aligned with Da Vinci, please. You know, <laughs> he said, oh, no pressure. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Well, yeah. I think he delivered. I really do think he delivered. And then my publisher has put out this limited edition hard copy version, which wow. is, uh, and the pages inside have the, the, the you know, that, um, gorgeous Da Vinci imprint and just this sort of sepia look to them. They're absolutely stunning. Wow. So yes, if you want a signed limited edition copy of that, then things in the well, the publishing, the publisher's website is where to order one of those. But I'm so excited because it's, I think it's only the second time I've had a hardback mm -hmm. um, of one of my books being, um, been made. And uh, so it's, it's very exciting, very yeah. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and something, something fresh. And my mother said, oh, she wants one. <laughs> Thank goodness for mothers. They're the first, our first purchases and our yeah. best purchases. Yeah. Well, there's just something really nice about having that extra heft to a book. Yeah, it, I, it is. And something special to have on, on a, ta a coffee table or mm -hmm. a bookshelf. Um, to keep for later. Yeah, I do. I'm very pleased, very excited about it. Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't gotten to it yet because my TBR list is long, but I will get there and I'm very yes. excited about it. Well, I think if by the time I finish my to, to be read list, I'll need to be at least 95 or perhaps 105. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. And I, and I buy a couple every day, you know, partly because, you know, I want to read what my, my colleagues are putting out. But it's right. just only so many time, you know, so much time in the day. And right. uh, yeah, I, I think I'm getting up into well up into the, you know, 80 or 90 books and I'm on some judging, you know, committees and juries mm -hmm. for for awards and uh, and and selection, uh, you know, stipends, and that means, you know, another sort of fifty or sixty manuscripts come in, and you know, yeah, it's a lot. I, I just did one a, a little bit earlier in the year of eighty manuscripts, and you know, if people do the go to the trouble of submitting their work, you really have to get, do it justice and mm -hmm. and give them a fair read. So mm -hmm. it's a lot. Of it's a lot of reading. I love it, though. You get a sneak preview of what's coming. And uh, it's so it's so exciting to see the talent coming mm -hmm. through um, this particular this particular one where I had 80 something manuscripts or 60 something. Yeah. Manuscripts uh, is was a New Zealand one. So I was mm -hmm. able to see what new writing was coming through. Um, oh, it, yeah. Wonderful. It is. It's wonderful. Yeah. Okay. One more series to get through and tell us a little bit about what it's about. Oh, the series I write with Dan Raybart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This series is um, um, this series is a supernatural crime noir, and effectively, it is a he said, she said collaboration. So we started out writing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. We started out writing a novella. We said, well, let's just have a go. We'd written, we'd actually done a couple of editing projects together, um, mm -hmm. community building projects, and they'd done very well. And we, we, we had a great rapport. We worked well together. So we said, well, let's write a little novella. And it turned out to be a three book trilogy, you know, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that always the way? Uh, so it's a little different. We wanted to have, um, we wanted to have two unique voices so we we didn't do what a lot of writers do as part of a collaboration where you write the story together and then you smooth it so it seems to be written by one writer and and that's mm -hmm. great because you can get two voices blended together mm -hmm. and quite a, a unique and unique style mm -hmm. but for us we decided we wanted dual protagonists so that we had you know a male voice and a female voice we've done siblings in fact by Fongai, which is a kind of family adoption mm -hmm. uh, in New Zealand. And so, so we had these two siblings where one is Māori, sort of a, a kind of dark and brooding sort of um, character who walks, you know, you know, um, onto, he walks the, the veil, if you like, between the living oh. and the dead. Oh. And and my and the and my character that I write, which is a slightly uptight Chinese scientist, which sort of yeah, and and it, which is fun, is really fun. It's a little bit drawn from my own background because I'm a research scientist by profession, and so mm -hmm. um, so I was able to pull on those and that and those and my Chinese heritage, of course. And so mm -hmm. 
really fun to be able to write that. The, the problem is that Dan is a very, um, he has a lot of flair and he writes, you know, we, we both write um, for, on the seat of our pants. So we're both mm -hmm. pants. And so he'll write, run us off down alleyways and, and into sort of dark <laughs> corners and, and you know, there'll be car chases and explosions. And then my scientific character will have to come along and explain this explosion and how did that happen and, you know, all of those sorts of things. So I'll open the chapter from Dan and I'll say, what has he done now? And, and it'll always be a surprise, you know, <laughs> and it'll be my job to fix it. <laughs> I love that. That's very wonderful. And I like yeah. the way you described the character as well, slightly uptight. Yes, that, that's definitely me. I'm a, I, I'm a very anxious piglet type. Mm -hmm. I, I suffer from anxiety and depression myself. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, think, I think there's some authenticity when you write a little bit of yourself into, into a character. So, I mean, she's not me at all, mm -hmm. but she mm -hmm. has some of my characteristics, some of the things that I that I think army so right. and, and it helps yeah it helps it makes it a little easier to to really get in and and um and to understand the come up to speed and understand your character quickly so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well I think it also gives something to the reader for the readers to grasp onto because it's a bit more of a touch of reality I guess in a world where reality perhaps doesn't quite matter as much yeah I think um I think in in when I was growing up, e.g., I never saw myself in a story. Mm -hmm. You know, there were never any stories that in, that involved little Chinese girls, you know, living in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know, and so sometimes you just kind of have to roll up your sleeves and write the story that you want to read. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I think that's the wonderful thing about stories and and. And writing now is that, you know, we're getting so many diverse voices um, mm -hmm. and stories. And it's just, it's it's very enriching. I think it's wonderful. We, and the more, the merrier. There's lots of space out here. We're all looking for something to read and different things appeal to different people. Mm -hmm. And I think it is important, particularly for young people coming through, that, they're, that they are able to recognize and identify themselves in stories. So, right. Yeah, so, and that, that means we need younger people writing their stories too because their perspectives are quite different, you know. Yeah, well, oh, all I can think of is I wish they taught me to write stories in school instead of what I did this summer was go fishing or whatever. Yeah, I, I think there's just so much to get through in the school curriculum, isn't there? Mm -hmm. You know, there's the literacy aspect and then, you know, we, right. we need some math because we're going to have to, you know, pay <laughs> our grocery bills and all those sorts of things. And science is, you know, look how much we're drawing on science right now oh, in August. So not November, but let's hope by November things are a little a little better, but right now in August, all, we all know all the words, don't we? Oh. You know, we know all the science and we're, you know, investigating, you know, what does this mean flattening the curve and, and you know, looking at percentages and, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, immunity and all the sorts of things. So, um, so I think, you know, those things are important and we need those in our school curriculum. And mm -hmm. just creativity, unfortunately, is... Um, is something that, you know, there's just not a lot of space for, which is a, such a shame because when yeah. you look at the when you look at the pandemic and our response to it, we're being at home and we've all been consuming stories and and you know, looking for escapism and looking for and also writing. A lot of people have been writing as a way of expressing their feelings during this time, journaling, mm -hmm. writing poetry, just to just in order to sort of cope. And so mm -hmm. um yeah, it's a shame there's not more more um, space in in our school curriculums for the just that that all out sheer joy of creativity. Mm -hmm. Well, there are so many different mediums you can do as well. I mean, you've got you know writing and music and uh, painting, woodworking. It's everything. Can be, exactly. You can do maths, um, science, whatever you like in all of those different disciplines as well. And I think That's right. that extra yeah. combination is really important. Totally. And uh, there's, you know, I mean, as I, I said, I came through a science background myself, mm -hmm. which is, which informs my science fiction and fantasy. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
there's so much creativity in science. Yeah. You know, it's not it, – people sort of have a notion of it being sort of very hard and disciplined and rigorous, which it is, mm -hmm. but also some of the best – some of the best discoveries have been come out of very imaginative thinking and out-of-the-box thinking. So, you know, um, I think it's not fair to say there is no creativity in those harder sciences. No, no yeah. I think it's just – you have to be able to sort of mix and match the different aspects here and there. Although I will admit, math and I just don't get along. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, I don't think I'd be writing the things I write had I not been a scientist first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and it's a funny story, actually, because, you know, when I was at school and, and, you know, you know, when you're trying to say, what subject shall I take and what shall I be when I grow up? And I loved arts and I mm -hmm. also loved sciences. And, you know, so I got to what was my school certificate year. So that's kind of um, uh, a sort of about 15 when our first <laughs> exam started in New Zealand. And then those have been superseded now, then, now the NCEA exams, which is completely different. But back in the day when I was at school, which was a long time ago, um, um, we had these, this first set of school exams, serious mm -hmm. school exams. And... And I took six subjects, uh, and they were completely split down the middle. I did um, um, the sciences, the three mm -hmm. sciences, and math as well. Mm -hmm. And I did English, French, and Latin. So I art oh, how subjects. Interesting. Oh, and art and art. Right. So um, so I did these these subjects is on that side, and these subjects on. And I got and dad and I, my parents said, well, let's see what your results are, and when the results come back, then we'll decide which way. Then you can decide which way to go. You oh, can no. have a look at the results and see where you've got. And my results came. I got straight A's, and I came, my results came back exactly the same. <laughs> so that did not help me at all. <laughs> 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 And so I was like, oh, no, now what do I do? So um, I had a really long discussion with my parents. And my dad, they were both accountants. So, you know, there was just um, – so they kind of said to me, you know what, you need something that's going to, you know – make a living mm -hmm. and we're not sure about this arts caper you know we're not sure where the work is um it seemed a little bit too scary and they said mm -hmm. look I'm sure there's going to be a job for you in science somewhere so you should do that so I went down the science track mm -hmm. um and now of course I combine the combine the two so I've kind of got the best of both worlds oh yeah. that's lovely I love I love being able to combine everything but then I come from a linguistics background which is closer to the science than the art but sort of somewhere still in the middle so yeah oh, fine. and when, when you say linguistics what did you do what languages did you take and ah yes linguistics um the art well it's actually the science uh you take language apart into its teeny, teeny, teeny pieces yes, and then you my put daughter it back is together it's the most yes. wonderful thing and so it's fun most, yeah so i did um well of course i focused in english because that's where my most skills were but i had German, Russian, Hebrew, French, uh, Middle Egyptian background, and I am still trying to learn Klingon, though that one's just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I think lingu uh, languages are just so interesting. And mm -hmm. when you have a knowledge of another language, not only do you have that cultural layer that goes on top of it, but you also have this really good understanding of, of um almost the the way people comprehend things you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. language is so different you know just when you understand the nuances of language and only the people who have a second language really get this don't they that there is it actually it actually um it informs the way you think yes doesn't it? I mean, I think of, I mean, I'm bilingual in French. I don't have any Chinese, but I'm mm -hmm. actually bilingual French. And, and you know, when I just think of the way of, the way that French is set up, if you just think of the, just the little thing of you, I miss you. And mm -hmm. in English, we say, oh, I miss you so much. And in French, they say, you miss you miss me, you know, and 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 it is, is so encompassing and in, and inclusive and so mm -hmm. different from the and just that reversal of the way they of the way the language is shows the difference in thinking, you know. Um, yeah. It's so oh, it's such wonderful. a small thing, but it, but everything is a small thing, but it all it, it all true. adds up to something huge. Yeah. So, so yes, and uh, you know, I lived seven years in France, so that gave oh, wow. me. 
um, that that different that different that extra language mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and in fact grotesque monster stories the the title story was is based on um, a trip to um, Claude Luce in in um, in France where I went to Da Vinci's you know little chateau that Da Vinci had has there um, that which which was built for him by um, Francois Premier because he was mm -hmm. the chief engineer. Um, at the time, he'd been exiled from Italy, I believe. And so I wrote a story based around that chateau, which has a tunnel going underneath to the chateau of Amboise, which is where Francois had his court. So, um, and they built this tunnel so the two of them could walk between and visit each other without having to, you know, get all the guards and go, you know, across, you know, across town. Um, yeah, so oh, interesting. It's, oh, oh. it's kind of a time of unrest as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, yes. perhaps it was for safety, but interesting. And so I wrote a story, you know, about the tunnel and um, and these grotesques, which is, you know, based on Da Vinci's um, grotesque images, but also his mechanical man um, um, oh. invention. So, again, the science and the engineering. Oh. So, yes. And he did, Da Vinci designed a, um, a mechanical soldier and actually the designs are in that particular little chateau, which is now a museum. So oh, it's amazing where places take you and mm -hmm. um, where you find stories, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. All right, uh, before we get too far into this digression of language, which I will happily follow for hours and hours. Yeah, oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably get back to you're writing and um what's next for you after okay theoretically when we're in november because you know time travel and you'll have uh book three of your collaborative series out what's next after that do you have any big plans or are you just kind of going where the wind takes you ah uh, yes i've got quite a lot of short story commissions mm -hmm. um so hopefully by november some of those will be will be written and done um <laughs> Between between now and November, I've also got Black Cranes coming out, which is a um, – I've just got a picture of the cover art. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yes. So this oh, is also wow. cover art by the same the same artist who did Grotesque, uh -huh. um, Greg Chapman. And that that book is, um, is an anthology that I am curating and editing with my um, Australian colleague, Jean Flynn. And mm -hmm. that particular book is about – well, it's a, it's a collection of stories based on the Asian diaspora, oh. um, but they're dark horror stories. So, yeah, and I include oh. some of my favourite um, Southeast Asian writers. So, um, Rin Chepeko, Nadia Bulkin, um, uh, Rena Mason, Angela Eureka Smith, Gabriella Lee. Wow. Um, Grace Chan. Yes, yeah, some really amazing, amazing writers. Um and this, I'm very excited. I think it's very special. And I think it's not been done before. Again, we mm -hmm. were talking about those places where the gaps are, where where we haven't written those stories. And mm -hmm. it's full of rage and full of beautiful, evocative imagery. And I'm oh. very, very proud of that. So oh, that's coming that out in September. Exciting. So we're now in November. So that came out in September. And... Um, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so that, that there's that one. Also, if we're now in November, then I will have had a story come out in the iconic magazine Weird Tales, where Jonathan Ooh. Mabry is the editor. Yes, that, that magazine's been out for since 1923, and it had a sort of catchy publishing history in the 70s, but effectively that magazine's been going for 100 years, and mm -hmm. I'm the very first New Zealander to ever p appear in the pages. Oh, wow. So I know. Yeah. So I'm very excited about that, and with a sort of Chinese New Zealand grimdark fairy tale. So, I'm oh. yes, I'm very, very excited about that. It's a huge step for me, and, and nice for New Zealand to have – Finally, to have you know to, to have a debut on those pages, so that's that's an ex, that's exciting. That's and coming up exciting. next year, hmm, I'm working on a um, a narrative poetry collection, so that'll be a oh. first for me. Mm, Ooh, uh, narrative poetry, gosh, yeah, I've done that in a while. Yes, it's, uh, so that's kind of based again around the Asian diaspora. As I'm getting older, I want to sort of investigate a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And like I said mm -hmm. before about where you don't see something written, it's time to kind of roll up my sleeves and write it because yeah. it's not been it's not been done yet. So, um, so that's that's something else. More Tane McKenna books. Another Tane McKenna book is on the cards, mm -hmm. and some some more Tane McKenna stories. So. 
um, yeah, yeah, those, those are the projects at the moment. And I, I have some other, you know, projects. Uh, there's a little film project in the in um, in development, so I'm excited about that as well. So, just yeah, I, I, the problem is like I can't say no to things. I'm really bad. <laughs> I'm ping me, and they say, oh, will you do this? And I go, oh. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, yes, I think I can squeeze that in, and and that's why I'm getting up at 4 a.m. for podcasts and things like that. <laughs> yes, I have that problem, mostly to do with books and whatnot. Which, to be fair, I, I'm not going to complain at all if someone hands me a book and asks me to read it. I'll say yes, okay, I'll do it. Yes. But. I'm not sure I could manage getting up at 4 a.m. and still be functioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait another couple of hours and see if I'm still functioning. Right at the moment, Con New Zealand is on. So, oh. okay, not November, but in August, Con New Zealand is on. At the, and um, the obviously the, the convention has had to go um, right. has had to go virtual. Although New Zealand is, in fact, um, when I, as I'm speaking, we're probably, I think, 80 or nearly 90 days into um, – no community transmission so mm -hmm. we're actually fine we're walking around we've got no masks where we wow. don't have any yes we have very strict border controls and that's how that's working but at the moment we're doing Worldcon virtually and so I've been mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. in panel sessions for four days and wow. on screen and it's yes exhausting and it and it's quite intimate, isn't it? Because, you know, you're mm. looking into people's, I mean, I can see your lovely pussy cat um, picture <laughs> yes, on the wall behind you. We're in my actual cat, but it has the subtitle Curiosity, which I thought was appropriate. Very good. But it is, we're looking in people's living rooms. And I mm. mean, um, I, yesterday I was in a, a cafe clutch and, I, you know, and one of my colleagues was, is in his bedroom, you know, and, you know, the, the, their family pictures are up on the wall mm -hmm. and, you know, the wardrobe door is open and you can see all the clothes and it's very, it's such an, it, you know, it's, we're distanced, but we're also much more intimate than we normally mm -hmm. would be because mm -hmm. it's not like you invite your guests into the bedroom when you haven't made the bed or anything like that. Don't you think? Yeah, oh, I just, absolutely. No, I love being able to get that glimpse into people's lives and, and seeing all the different things on the wall. I've seen lots of fun posters and bookshelves and the occasional creature wandering through. Oh, the pets. The pets have been riding on it, haven't they? Absolutely. Yeah. No, thank goodness mine are currently elsewhere. They're sleeping. Because most of the time <laughs> my cat will come wandering right across the screen, which is super helpful. Yeah, but it's also nice. I mean, people, you know, every look at the internet. It's all full of cat memes. Everybody <laughs> loves everybody loves a cat. So, you know, um, but it, you know, I think that it has been a strange time, and and it, it's a different way of looking into other people's lives, just as books and writing, mm -hmm. you know, and reading are a way of stepping into another life and reading some other world and escaping mm -hmm. into and so into some different reality, which I think is really the magic of books, of course. Yes. Oh, books. In my opinion, you can hardly ever go wrong if you've got a book at your side. Well, yes, I can't go without one, to be honest. I have to have at least a few lined up, ready to go. Oh, Happily, absolutely. I'm good for, I'm probably good for another 20 years, but I do okay. like to have quite a few lined up. I know, I'm much the same way I go. And I haven't actually written down my list of books that I need to read because I've got them all, you know, around. But there are many. Yeah. And yeah. I'm never going to stop acquiring them. I just... I love them too much. So I think it's a different hobby, isn't it? Acquiring books. It's mm -hmm. not the same hobby as reading books. Acquiring books is also a hobby, you know, and there's yeah. just joy in having, I've got this and if I'm ready, when I'm ready to read it or when I have time to read it, I will read it, but I, I've got it, you know, and mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. there's some satisfaction in just having, which is, yeah, maybe that's a little bit materialistic, but it's just the joy of, you know, the joy of, of, of collecting, you know, a piece of literature that that's there and ready for you to ready to go when you're ready for it. So. Yes, yes. Although I will admit, I am out of bookshelf space. So, <laughs> oops. Yes. All right. Well, it has been absolutely wonderful talking with you. I'm very excited about all of your books, upcoming and already out. Although, time travel and and yes, whatnot. time travel. Yes. <laughs> 
by the time this goes up, most of the ones we've talked about will be out already, and it's very exciting. Hooray! Thank um, you. Trying to keep it's calendar been, in my brains. It's been <laughs> wonderful talking to you, EG. I'm sorry, for, I, I'm running off at the mouth, but um, oh. uh, it's the uh, first. Fine. Yes. Saturday morning, it's the weekend, so I'm sort of eager to get in. And um, mm-hmm. so it's been an absolute pleasure. And thank you very much for your very informed questions, um, <laughs> which have been easy to answer. So that's, that's been great. That's the fun. Yeah. If uh, I can uh, just keep the authors talking, we'll explore the world of books. Things are usually pretty much oh, okay. Well, we need to have another conversation sometime about linguistics. Oh. That absolutely, I love ah. it. Yes, totally love yeah. it. Yes, one of these days I will actually write a proper book about language for fiction writers. I think that's a very good idea. It's a great panel topic too, isn't it? Mm. Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll save that for next time. We'll save that for next time. <laughs> well, have a fantastic day. Do cause some trouble. Uh, not too much, though. We wouldn't want to start Saturday off a little too energetic after all. <laughs> Thanks very much. And thank you so much for having me. Yeah. All right. Well, I shall see you around. Thanks very much. <laughs> EG, lovely lovely to meet you. Yeah, you too. I know. Okay, bye. Have a good day. You too.